How would you respond to the charge that anti-Zionism is the new anti-Semitism? Actually, the locus classicus, the best formulation of this was by uh, an ambassador to the United Nations, uh, Abba Evan, Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, uh, in an article that he wrote about 45 years ago, which I urge you to read, uh, which appeared in an American Jewish journal, Congress Weekly, a major journal of the more liberal wing of the American Jewish community. He wrote an interesting article in which he, dis he was then UN ambassador from the state of Israel. He advised the American Jewish community that they had uh, two tasks to perform. One task was to show that criticism of the policy, what he called anti-Zionism, that means actually criticisms of the policy of the state of Israel were anti-Semitism. That's the first task. Second task, if the criticism was made by Jews, their task was to show that it's neurotic self-hatred, needs psychiatric treatment. And he gave two examples of the latter, latter category. One was I have stone, the other was me. So we have to be treated for our psychiatric disorders and non-Jews have to be condemned for anti-Semitism if they're critical of the state of Israel. It's understandable why uh, Israeli propaganda would take this position. I don't particularly blame Abba Eben for doing what ambassadors are sometimes supposed to do, but we ought to understand it. There is no sensible charge, no sensible charge. There's nothing to respond to. It's not a form of anti-Semitism. It's simply criticism of the criminal actions of a state, period. Conflating anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism can be problematic for several reasons. One, it undermines legitimate critique. Zionism is a pl political ideology associated with the establishment and support of a Jewish state in the historic land of Israel. Anti-Zionism, therefore, opposes this ideology. Criticism of a political ideology or government policies, including those of the state of Israel, is a fundamental aspect of free speech and debate. Equating such criticism with anti-Semitism can silence legitimate concerns and stifle necessary discussions about policies, human rights, and international law. Two, it misrepresents intentions. Not all critics of Zionism or the Israeli government's policies are motivated by anti-Semitic beliefs. Many individuals who oppose Zionism, Zionism do so on political, humanitarian, or ethical grounds without harboring any hatred or prejudice towards Jewish people. By conflating the two, it misrepresents the intention of those engaging in, in legitimate, legitimate criticism. Three, it deters resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is complex with multifaceted historical, political, and social dimensions. Simplifying it into a matter of anti-Semitism versus support for a Jewish state oversimplifies the issue, obstructing meaningful dialogue and potential solutions. <clears throat> Four, it weakens, weakens fight against actual anti-Semitism. By indiscriminately labeling legitimate criticism as anti-Semitic, it dilutes the severity of actual anti-Semitic acts and sentiments. It makes it harder to address and combat real instances of hatred and discrimination against Jewish individuals. Five, it impedes academic and political discourse. In academic and political settings, the conflation of anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism can create an environment where certain viewpoints are deemed unacceptable or taboo. This impedes intellectual exploration, critical analysis, and the open exchange of ideas. It's essential to differentiate between legitimate criticisms of policies, ideologies, or actions and genuine instances of bigotry or prejudice. 
Doing so allows for more nuanced discussion and a better understanding of the complexities surrounding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and related geopolitical issues. Well, I hope you like this video and give a subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.